Hello there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Patty and if you're new here, this is the Mind Shift series where we focus on leveling up our mindset because when our mindset is where it needs to be, every other area of our life just becomes so much easier to manage. Let's get right into it. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how you can release all that pent up trauma that you have stored inside, whether it's from your childhood or a couple years ago or yesterday, you have this weight on you and you feel sometimes maybe like you can't breathe or you feel like there is no point to anything that's happening because you're not happy, you're not able to enjoy all the blessings that are coming into your life because of this heavy weight that you're carrying. So we're gonna focus on letting that go. The first step is to acknowledge where your trauma came from. What is it that is causing you to feel like you had to watch this video? Typically, when you ask yourself this question, the first answer is the right answer. If you need to go deeper through some journaling exercises or maybe get into a deep meditation, do whatever you need to do, but you need to acknowledge what is hurting you before you can do anything about it. Many of us carry unresolved childhood trauma from the way that our parents treated us or maybe the people in our lives, whether they were our friends at the time. Whatever it may be, there is something from when we were younger that has affected us that we now carry into our daily life. This is not healthy because it's going to prevent you from having real connections with people and living your life to the fullest when you're still kind of low-key focusing on all of that negativity that happened in your past. It is no longer your reality today. When we experience something as a child, it's going to leave such a strong mark on us because we were in a place where we were very vulnerable. And when we were children, we look to our parents for guidance. We look to our parents for safety. And we think that they're perfect. They're the ones that are gonna treat us how we deserve to be treated. Whatever we get from our parents, that's who we are, right? No, nobody is perfect. I guarantee you, whatever your parents did to you, their parents did worse to them. This is not to justify their actions. This is to understand that every human being is doing the best that they can do. And no human being can be happy when they know that they're inflicting pain on somebody else. Even if they may look happy, they may be smiling, they may have lots of material possessions, if they know in their heart that they're hurting others, they cannot be happy. So you have to find comfort in the fact that it is not your job to punish anybody because they're already punishing themselves. The purpose of life is to love. And so if we still have hatred towards our parents or towards others who have hurt us, we cannot live life to the fullest. We cannot love others and love ourselves when we know in our hearts that we are carrying resentment and anger towards somebody else. If you are still in a position where you are suffering from the actions of others, this is where you need to start acknowledging that you do have power in your life. You can leave. You can pack your bags and go. So every day that you remain in the same place, suffering from the same issues, that is a choice, that is your decision. If you cannot leave right now, you're not in the financial position, you don't feel like you're strong enough to leave, that's okay. But acknowledging that you can leave is a big step because a lot of the times we trap ourselves and we make ourselves prisoners into a situation that we are not actually prisoners. We're not in jail. No one is making us stay anywhere. We are keeping ourselves here and we are keeping ourselves in a suffering state. Maybe it's easier for you to blame someone else than to acknowledge that they no longer have power over you and now you have to start the healing journey because it really is your own responsibility to heal yourself. Your parents don't owe you anything. Your friends don't owe you anything. Your family doesn't owe you anything. You have life. That's what they owed you. They owed you life and you are alive and you are here. The rest is up to you. Don't get stuck in someone else's karma. They have their issues. They have their problems. They projected that onto you and now you identify with those issues. You think that is you. It's not. The generational trauma passed down is not you, it is not your soul. 
It is simply ignorance to life. It is up to you to break the cycle and decide that you want to live with love and you want to heal yourself and you want to heal everyone around you. So you need to remove yourself from situations that are not aligned with you because whoever we surround ourselves with, we are going to reap the benefits of their actions, but we're also going to reap the repercussions of their actions. So don't surround yourself by people that you aren't proud of, that you don't trust, that you don't want to become. If they don't inspire you to be better, if they don't make you feel loved and comforted, you don't need to have them in your life. It doesn't matter who they are, you don't need to have them in your life. Because right now, your priority is getting yourself in a place where you feel comfortable, you feel safe, you feel successful, and then you can start on the journey of, okay, let's figure out how we can build that relationship back up. But the first step is to heal yourself. The journey is not going to be easy. There's going to be times where you feel very happy and you think, wow, okay, it's over. I'm not suffering anymore. And then there's going to be a trigger or something presented to you that's going to put you back in that place mentally. And you're going to feel sunken down and weighed down by that trauma once again. When you experience these negative feelings, you need to acknowledge it understand why you're feeling these feelings and pull yourself out of that. Some popular ways are by saying affirmations. Sometimes you get a hit of anxiety and what you need to do is say, okay, I'm feeling very anxious right now. Why am I feeling anxious? Then you say, okay, I'm feeling anxious because of this, this, and this. Then you're going to say the affirmations. I have everything I need. I am safe. I have food. I have shelter. This will get resolved on its own. You can easily find affirmations that are going to make you feel better in that moment because the point of affirmations aren't to magically change your life. The point of affirmations is to momentarily soothe your mind so that way you can elevate your mindset, elevate your vibration to the point where you can now think clearly and find a solution to your problem. Sometimes the solution is going to be do nothing and accept it. Sometimes that's what it is. But most of the time, you're going to have a very clear idea of what you need to do to fix the situation. But before you can fix something, you have to get out of that feeling. Whenever you feel your heart drop, your stomach sink, you feel that warm rush feeling in your body where you feel like you're burning up with anxiety or stress or anger, or you feel so low that you just cry, let it out, feel your emotions, don't run away from them, don't suppress them, let them all out. But once you've let out what you need to let out, it's time to affirm what is good, affirm that you are okay and elevate yourself back up so you can bring yourself to a place where you're thinking clearly and you can make good decisions for yourself. Now, I personally used to struggle with a lot of anxiety and depression and because I didn't have the most positive childhood, I had happy moments, but there were also some not so happy moments and there was also a lot of resentments that I had towards different members of my family and Going through that journey of letting all of that go hasn't been easy, but I feel 10 times lighter for it, which is why I'm making this video because I want you to feel lighter too. I don't want you to feel weighed down. I don't want you to feel stressed and depressed and anxious. These are all symptoms of a broken heart. And that's really what it is because maybe you didn't feel like you got the love you deserved. Maybe you didn't feel like you were valued enough. Maybe you feel like you were taken advantage of. That is all heartbreaking. That's a heartbreaking experience. So you need to heal that heartbreak before you can think rationally. And really, you can't place blame on anybody else. And while you have your heart broken, nothing that you do can be proactive. Nothing that you do can lead you to a better life because you're operating from a position of lack. You are operating from a position of feeling unloved and unworthy. When you start to come out of your shell and you start to realize that you have things that you need to work on, it's important to find a purpose because we will never be perfect. We remember and even if we say, okay, we forgive, 
we still remember. Nobody can just wipe our memory with the click of a button. So it's impossible for us to just be perfect. So understand that just because you are still getting the occasional negative feeling, the fact that you know how to handle that and bring yourself back up to a point where you are clear-headed, that means you are good. You're good to go. I see so many people getting lost in their healing journey. They're always healing, they're never complete. And through that, it's just a toxic cycle because you have everything you need right now. It's just a mindset shift away. When you have a passion, when you have something that you love to do, people that you love to spend your time with, that takes you out of yourself. You can now bring your whole heart and put that into your purpose. If you don't have a purpose, if you are not focused on that purpose, you're going to keep repeating the same healing cycle and think that, oh no, I'm just, I went through that and I have to heal, I have to heal, I have to heal, I have to heal. No, that is not the way. The way is you acknowledge that you have a problem you find a way to remove yourself from that environment so you can heal. Then when you start the healing journey, you're gonna go through a couple of phases. At first, it's going to be, you're gonna feel a little bit icky. You're gonna feel like you're lying to yourself. You're going to feel like, what's the point? There's no use. It'll get to a point where you 80% of the time are feeling good. Maybe there's still that 20% of the time where there's negative feelings will come in, you see triggers around you and you think, oh, all that work I just did went out the window. No, because guess what? You are seeing your behaviors, you are seeing what you are doing that is not correct, that is coming from a place of trauma and from a place of hurt and broken heart. You are acknowledging that and you are changing your behavior to align with your highest self and your highest good. So that means you're good. <laughs> All right, so when we've acknowledged that we're hurt, we figured out why we're hurt, we've removed ourselves from the situation that's hurting us, and we are now focusing on healing our heart, there's so many tactics that you can use to help you along this journey to where you feel more content and peaceful. Key is don't seek perfection. Don't seek to be happy-go-lucky, jolly, smiling 24-7 because that's not a goal that anyone should have. There's going to be ups and downs to life. You are not a robot. So let's get into some tactics. The first tactic is to seek professional help. I know it may sound very obvious, but we can't do this by ourselves. You're watching this video because you needed some advice from someone. So why not speak to a professional who can understand your specific situation and help you get to the root cause of that. Number two is to build a support system. This can be family members that you trust. This can be friends that you trust. This can be a YouTube channel. This can be people that you meet on the internet. Anybody that makes you feel safe and comfortable that you can come to that will not judge you. Number three is to prioritize self-care. A lot of this trauma comes from the fact that our heart is broken and the people around us didn't take care of us. So we have that empty cup that we need to fill. That's where self-care comes in. When you are giving yourself that love that you weren't given by others, it's the most gratifying emotion and feeling and experience that you can have. Exercising, eating healthy, getting some sleep, drinking a glass of wine, taking a warm shower. Just do what makes you feel good. Practice self-care and it'll just fill you up. Number four is expressive arts. So this can literally mean painting, drawing, writing a short story. This can be dancing, singing. It's going to be anything for you to let out that creative energy and maybe let out those emotions that you can't put into words. Let out that energy, shake your body, whip your hair back and forth. Do what you need to do where, so you can release that tension. Number five is mindfulness and grounding techniques. So this can mean meditation. Another form is exercising because you want to understand that you don't need anyone else. You don't need external things. You don't need material things. You don't need anyone else. You have mother earth, you have nature, you have God, you have everything you need within yourself. So by doing meditation and becoming still and being mindful, this can help you tap back into 
our true love, our one true love, which is ourselves and God and the energy around us. Number six is to educate yourself. You want to be aware of the behaviors that manifest from trauma because when you know what's wrong, then it's easier for you to understand that there's an issue and that you need to fix it. Number seven is journaling. Journaling is such a powerful tool because it's private. You don't have to speak it to anybody. It's just for you. You can write it on a piece of paper and when you write things, there's a certain feeling that you get because you're almost releasing it. For an easy way to journal, I've attached a link below with a printable copy of some journal prompts and space for you to fill your answers in. You don't have to do all of them. Just do the ones that you feel resonate with you. Number eight, setting healthy boundaries. This goes back to your environment. You want to make sure that you are in an environment that is surrounded by love. You want to be clear with people what is acceptable to you and what is not acceptable to you. You've been practicing self-care, so you know what is not aligned with your highest self. You know what is not good for you. You know what you're not meant for. You know. So set those boundaries with other people. There's nothing wrong with telling someone no or saying, give me a day to think about it or I'll get back to you. You'd be surprised how understanding people really are. Setting boundaries also goes hand in hand with avoiding triggers. You've done that work, you've figured out why you're hurt, why you're traumatized, you're working towards a better way. You know what your triggers are. It's those same behaviors that your parents had, that those friends had, that boyfriend or girlfriend had. You know those traits, you know that. So avoid it at all costs because you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're not quite where you want to be and you're constantly surrounding yourself by things that bring you back to that place. There's going to be a time where these triggers won't have such a profound impact on you, but as you're beginning on this journey, it's so, so important to just not even try. Just don't even put that in your face. Number 10, positive affirmations. We talked about this a little bit already, but saying affirmations, especially when you're feeling negative, can be so powerful. You can pick and choose whatever affirmations work for you. There's millions of affirmations on the internet. I'll link below some affirmations that I like to use. But again, it's really up to you. It's what makes you feel good. Sometimes when I'm feeling stressed or when I go back to that place that I don't feel loved or I don't feel worthy, I say, all is well, I am safe, I am loved, God loves me, God always provides for me, everything always works out for me no matter what. That's an affirmation or I guess you could say a mantra that I like to say sometimes when I'm feeling stressed and I change it around depending on what exactly I'm feeling. Forgiveness. As I said before, everybody is truly doing the best that they can. Even if that is not good enough for you and it doesn't give you what you need, they're not coming from a malicious place. Most people are good at heart. They're not evil people. They are doing the best that they can with what they have. They were not lucky enough to be presented with the opportunity to heal themselves. Maybe they had to work to provide for you so they don't have time to go to therapy. There's so many reasons that people aren't able to heal themselves or haven't started on that journey, but it doesn't mean that they're evil or that they're bad. So you have to let go of that and just forgive them. Something I like to do is just write out um, everything that, I, that hurt me and what they did, almost like I'm writing them a letter. Dear mom, this really hurt me and this is how I fell and la 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 la. And then at the end just say, I know that you were doing the best that you could and I forgive you totally. I know it can be hard to say that because maybe you, you say it but you don't feel it because you're like, no, I don't forgive them. They shouldn't have done that. And you're right, they shouldn't have, but they did. And so the only thing you can do now is to forgive them because holding resentment is more of a weight on you and on them. You are subconsciously not allowing the other person to heal because you are maintaining resentment over them. You have to let that go. Forgiveness also goes for yourself. You need to forgive yourself. Whatever you did in the past, whatever you did yesterday, whatever you did 10 minutes ago, that is the past. 
It's not to justify future behavior. It's not to say, oh, well, whatever happens, I'll just do whatever I want because then it'll be in the past and it doesn't matter. No. What I'm trying to say is that what has already happened before you've come to this realization, it is not your responsibility. You have to forgive yourself. Again, journaling, writing a letter to yourself, writing a letter to the people that you've hurt, writing a letter to God, to whoever, anything that makes you let out that guilt and forgive yourself because you can't hear your heart if you're still feeling guilty and you still feel like you're a bad person then you will just hold yourself back from healing because you think oh well i'm bad i don't deserve to feel love i don't deserve to heal so i have to stay in my ways because i'm a bad person look at everything that i've done let go of that you are no longer living in that reality you are living in the reality that is true and the reality that is true is that you are a being of love you are a being of light as soon as you acknowledge that, everything else is gonna become easier. So I know that was a lot of information to process. I really appreciate you watching all the way until the end. If you feel like you have any questions or anything that I missed or anything you don't agree with, please feel free to leave a comment. You're not gonna hurt my feelings. I'm here because I want to share my journey and also learn for myself. So I, just as much as you're learning from me, I'm learning from you too. Remember, your journey is unique, but with the right strategies, the right support, and the right mindset, anything is possible. It's never too late. Remember, I love you, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.